Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're taking a look at how to export those things in Grasshopper correctly and how to install plugins and use them correctly in your Grasshopper thing. So let's roll the intro. So yeah, I guess I hope you liked the intro. It actually was made by Grasshopper, like made with Grasshopper. Um, it, I will maybe show another tutorial how to do it. So, to top this tutorial off, um, we have this amount of things already here in, in the viewport and we want to put those now into the Rhino environment. However, if we're going to bake this, you will clearly see, if we deactivate under view a display no preview, you will see that the color actually will not resemble will not resemble the real color that we want them to show. So there is no real way of doing that like natively in Grasshopper. However, there are there are plugins that you can use for Grasshopper. So let's go to Food for Rhino. Go on here. And then you're gonna there, this is basic website which basically shows you different Grasshopper components that you can install in the Grasshopper plugin. So, if you go to apps, for example, and then you sort by um, downloads, so those are the mo most common ones. Those are all all really, really, really good applications inside your Grasshopper environment that I would recommend. Pufferfish kind of makes things uh, very easy to use. Human, this one we're gonna download is a very good thing of baking in things and like reading data. Mesh edit is one really important, very small component. Elk is really useful if you wanna use OpenStreetMaps, uh, OSM things. GH Python is another thing which if you're gonna go to program directly, very, really important. Ladybug is for, um, I made a video on this one as well, uh, it is for um, solar analysis and design. Lunchbooks is really really good for, um, it has uh, things for example to panelize and to remesh and to um, do all those kind of like editing things in a really convenient way. And Kangaroo uh, is already built in in Grasshopper now as far as I know, but it's basically like for live physics stuff. So we're gonna focus on this time on human um, click, and this is how it's gonna go. So you might need to have your own username, you need to log in. Um, just put some random email in there or just maybe put your email in there. Then you click download and then actually you see it will jump you in the bottom section and here there are like several download links but as you see uh, here there's for example the human, um, human for Rhino 6. This is the one we want to use and um or if you have a mac you can uh, download this one i guess so let's download it and for now uh yeah so this is like the next one so if i guess you can first you should download on your download folder and um the question now is like where do you install it to so it will be in the right installment place to find that out you go into the grasshopper and then you go to um, file um, special folders component folders and then you have a new uh, window that pops up it's under the your like um, user uh, your name app data roaming grasshopper libraries and there you have all your grasshopper plugins and um, for example here you have your um, your your plugins that you just put or have and you basically just Control Z, and then you go to your folder back to library folder, and Control V in there. So um, you, when you already have it installed, so I'm just gonna just quickly delete that. Um, you might need to re um, restart Rhino for that. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do it, and it will take a while. So I will just have it how it is. However, if you installing it freshly, you might need to just restart Rhino and it's gonna be working fine. Anyway, um, so when we now, like, so this is like, so now you have your um, human com um, component of Grasshopper installed and you can basically use it for 
um, certain things so for especially for baking so what you can do now is for example it has this creation tab it has several different things one of them being create attributes bake geometry and then it also has under documents it has create modify materials so those are the things we're basically needing for now there are also other things for manipulating texture and then also getting some properties and as well um, getting for example viewports and all those kind of things into the grasshopper environment which is really really useful but we for now we just focus on the big geometry and create attributes thing this is always like the the procedure like when you in, uh, install a plugin you kind of have to like get used to it first like get used to the um, components that they use so you can uh, apply them correctly anyway so we're gonna go on the creation bake geometry and it will just ask us three different things so the bake is basically the bake button to like make something bake immediately then the geometry that we want to have and the attributes so we already have the geometry but if we just put in the color in here it will not actually do that much because we need to create a property of the geometry first so we're gonna go on creation create attributes and there are like a lot of things don't get worried about that um, but we just need um, the material name and the color so um, we're gonna create the attribute by um, dragging and dropping the material name in here and as well as the color as well and sometimes we need to add the name here as well so it works correctly um yes what is sometimes there's a warning material not found okay ah okay because we need to go to documents and then create modify material so we need to create the material that we put in here we cannot just put the, the color here directly so we need to put the diffuse layer would be that and also needs to have a name so it just needs to have a definition of it so in that case you can also just just use the color so now we have the material name defined or like the properties of the material and this material gets put into the material name of the object attributes those object attributes now will be put into the uh, attributes of the big geometry and the geometry will be used from the geometry that we want to use it from in the beginning um, so let me actually just deactivate the Rhino preview okay it's sweet and we now also want to have a button to basically enable this uh, bake command really quickly so we just click, uh, put a button here and now when we click the button it will generate the geometry in the Rhino viewport as you see here and now it's clickable it's all in here it all exists and obviously if you want to do like a change to those things and you want to change the color or whatever to it then we can bake it again and as you see and you can make a really nice kind of if you want to make an iteration of your things then you can just make it quickly like that I don't know it was the same one resets to black and white today we have another one and then we make another one here like that and we can make this one as well and we put it to 200 here as well so as you see you can have a really nice kind of iteration of those things in a really like fast matter I think it's like really useful because um, you can iterate rather quickly instead of like baking everything again so and the good thing now is for example we want to create the same things for our wrap balconies so we just gonna um, I think we just do it like for normal again so we're gonna go into documents and under create modify material the material will be the material that we put here just like the simple color I guess uh, and the name for it and then we're gonna go on the creation create attributes and we're gonna put in the material name in here and the geometry we need to take from the big geometry tab and take it from here put that in there and then we can also put in this one in the original button that we want to like click it and it will create it all at once and for some reason it doesn't Ah, oh, yeah, it needs to have also, I think, a name and a color here as well. So I'm just gonna undo that. Yeah, and as you see, 
it bakes correctly. And if you want to change like something to it, maybe like put in like less of the amounts of things and maybe um, decrease the size of the things that we want to have and then make the rotation a little bit more like that then we can already very quickly just bake it again and then we see we have a different um, different way of, of having this here really really easy really really nice to do and um, yeah so that that's a very cool thing actually that we can that you can use really to your own advantage and you can um, create you can cr create your own um, definitions or your own like baking really really quickly okay so we are only, only 10 minutes in so I think I also want to show you another uh, another thing that we can still do in Grasshopper um, so let me just take a look real quick yeah so let's actually go back to the food for rhino page and um let's go to this page of like apps and then we have the list of apps and you, then you go by a download number and um there is also this uh current called it's, it's called lunchbox and um, here you see the basic things. It is really useful plugin for getting really quick, um, um, really quick forms in a, in a very quick and easy way. So just gonna download this as well. You need to put in the right one, most like the most uh, actual one. This one, for example. And it actually it will be easier to install. You just like you actually just save it on your desktop. And then you go into the folder and you literally actually just, as far as I know, yeah, it just installs by itself like this. As you see, you just double click it and it just like, it will install very easy. Um, yeah, just click accept, they're fine. If you wanna have some viruses, no, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> um, it will install the things for you. Just, just install. Well, I don't know. I just put like a random at email. Might work fine. That's not the. That's not true. However, yeah. Okay, it just installs. And. Now it's successfully installed, so that was very easy to do again. And now you would have this uh, lunchbox plugin up here, and it has several different things uh, that you can use. Um, however, one of the most useful ones actually the panels one in my opinion, and also like the math one is a rather interesting one. And there's also machine learning and data importing here as well. So um, just to to get the one of the panel one existing really quick, uh, if you for example if you just create under the tools you already had, you would create a rectangle. Let's actually deactivate the other ones first and display it under view. Uh, display should preview. Um, and let's create a rectangle which has some size to it. And then this rectangle has just a boundary surface, like really, really simple. And now you can use the panels tool, for example, under uh, Rhino quad panels or um, um, just normal quad panels. I actually like the Rhino quad panels a little bit more. Um, you can just drag and drop the surface in there and it creates this kind of almost like a brick like texture. And if you just increase uh, the amount a little bit, you see, oppa. you see it creating like a really nice grid texture. And for example, those panels, then they again can be moved upwards. And when we move them like in a certain series upwards, that is the length of um, the amount of panels that we have. Um, list length then when we make this one like 
small step and we can move it into the Z direction, so upwards. We, uh, if everything is not crashing completely now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess that's what we expect because it goes like from lower, lower, lower there. Um, however, if we would just decrease this amount a little bit drastically, um, you would have, I think, a really nice kind of random texture of things. However, the, th the problem at the moment is that, oh yeah, first of all, they're all extruded up like once, one at a time, so we just want to, oh yeah, we want them, We want this series to be a little smaller, not like that big. Ah, because we have put the, I don't want to put the start in there. Um, this should be like way more user friendly. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. And with that, we can, if you want to randomize it, we can just put a jitter command in, which basically randomizes those lists of points in a more random way. That's actually also what you saw in the beginning. Actually, wait, let me kind of show you that quickly. So that jitter effect, what you just saw there, is basically just a randomizer of um, the distances that go up and down here. So we can just have it from, it goes from zero to one and has this jitter effect as you see here now. See it goes into order from chaos. So that's basically how we have that. And I think now we can obviously just have the same kind of procedure again with um, with uh, the geometry here and we can just bake it quickly and then we have our geometry color in the way once so yeah um, I really hope you like this like a small series of videos um, I will see what things are gonna go do in the next videos but we might need to we'll take a look more on some more plugins or we might need to take a look at uh, how to define certain things that you could really need, need for architecture and to kind of have like a more hands-on examples on those things so um yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you liked it and if you have any ideas any things that you want to see covered uh please let me know and yeah have a very nice day and thank you very much for watching